Hey guys, I'm Jose Villa. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about the 51.2 uh, G Master lens, which is a brand new lens uh, that Sony just announced a couple of months ago. I was very lucky enough to try it out and, uh, and now have purchased one. But what I want to um, kind of run through really is how beautiful this lens is and why I love it and when I love to photograph with it. I think that if you're a portrait photographer, a wedding photographer, uh, this is a perfect lens um, for you. So really quickly, if you don't know, um, I am a film lover and I have been photographing film for many years. Um, I love the Contact 645, the 80 millimeter uh, Carl Zeiss lens is my favorite lens. It dials down to 2.0. And I think the reason I love this 51.2 is because it gives me that very beautiful bouquet look um, that a lot of portrait photographers are loving. Now the backdrop or the background I should say is just so soft and so beautiful. So you know I will be showing you some images throughout t today's uh, chat here and I'll give you examples of those images that I love um, and why I love them and why I think the 51.2 was perfect for that scenario. So let's get into uh, into this first one so this is actually a photo of my son uh, he was three months old here and uh, and this is shot with that 51.2 now um, what I did here is and as you all know you know when you're photographing children and babies especially they're moving very fast so one thing that I love about the 1.2 is that um, you know the focus is incredibly lightning speed um, for a lens like this that has a lot of glass it's uh, it's very rare. It's it's pretty incredible that this can this lens can focus that that fast. Um, I photographed uh, Joaquin here as he was moving around like crazy, and I was still able to get some really beautiful photos. Now, um, if if you can tell, the focus is you know right on his face there, and the rest goes completely out. I mean, if you even look at his ears, um, they're super super soft. I think it's a very beautiful beautiful lens for that. Um, the other scenario, I think, you know, as a wedding photographer, mostly I'm doing a lot of engagement portraits. So engagement portraits are a perfect scenario uh, for using this lens. This next image is a, an image that I turned into black and white. I like motion. I love motion within my images, especially during, let's say, a controlled situation like an engagement session. And in this case, I was having the bride and groom just sort of you know, stand apart and then come in and connect and, and her embrace. But there was movement here and I was able to capture um, such beautiful uh, emotion, I think. And with that 51.2 really helped me to kind of give me that soft, beautiful look, which is usually what I'm looking for to help minimize the background um, and, and the distractions. And this lens is so good for that. So this other engagement portrait here of this lovely couple, this bride wearing a very beautiful bright dress. Um, now, if you notice, I'm backlighting here. And uh, same scenario here, there's a little bit of movement, nothing too, too much, but um, you know, focusing right on them with a little bit of that flare, shooting right into the sun. It's a perfect camera for that scenario as well, working with flare. Going back to this engagement portrait, look at the trees in the background. That bouquet is so beautiful. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is that when you, the closer you get to the subject or the closer you get to an object, um, the more out of focus or the more bouquet you get in the image in the background that is out of focus. Um, and that is something that I will, um, that I love and that I'll show you later on too with some detail shots during, during a wedding day. Um, Okay, so moving on to a wedding day. Now, this is really important uh, to, to take note. It's not always about photographing, you know, people with this lens. Actually, um, photographing, you know, details and even paper. This, this next image here is an invitation suite that I photographed with this lens. Um, now, I'm shooting this one at 1.2 as well. It's giving it a really, really soft look. Um, of course, you want the main focus to be, you know, wherever possibly the names are, you know, whatever the main focus 
or the, the point uh, that you're sort of setting and putting across with, with whatever it is that you are going to be showing. What is, for example, this could be the names of the couple. Um, and so, you know, I think use the lens and I'm using the lens in so many different scenarios in a wedding day, um, as I mentioned. Now, of course, it's my favorite for portraits, but definitely, um, definitely paper will also work. Now, um, the next set of images are of brides in their getting ready rooms. Now, the, the great beautiful thing about this lens dialing down to 1.2 is that um, as we all know wedding photographers when we walk into a getting ready room the rooms are very busy you know there there's suitcases on the ground there's stuff everywhere and a lens like this will really help minimize the distractions in the background while you're shooting it at 1.2 or you know 2.0 or 2.8 now um, in this next image i have window on the camera right, and this is a black and white image of the bride looking straight into the camera. Um, now I'm using a wall, so of course this is just sort of as a backdrop just to make, basically make that bride stand out, but such a great lens for getting ready rooms that are very, very busy and distracting, keep that in mind. Um, the next image is just a, a very simple bouquet shot. You know, the, the floral designer's gonna love this image because it really shows off their uh, they're floral, they're floral, but you know, it's a great lens for something like this as well, using all natural light. This uh, wedding that I photographed a couple weeks ago, a beautiful, colorful Indian wedding. You know, bride is looking into the camera. I'm using that window light on the left. This is a great example, I think, of using the 51.2 because of the foreground and then using, of course, the focus on her face and then the background. So it gives it rich, beautiful um, texture and, and also just, I think, um, point of focus. So if you look here, uh, this is definitely one of my favorite images from this set of, of images from this wedding. Uh, and that was in part because of the 50. So um, anyways, okay, so sometimes people think that maybe using the 50 is a little too slow. I really love using the 50 when the bride and groom are walking down the aisle. So this next set of images is brides and grooms like, you know, kissing, walking down the aisle. We know that they're, that uh, in some cases, some people really just dash down the aisle. They're nervous, they're excited. Um, and the 50 1.2, because of the, the focus, is pretty incredible. So there's always going to be movement, um, but in these in these sort of sets of pictures. But of course, that 50 really makes sure to freeze it and give us that really pretty soft uh, bouquet in the background. Now, if we look at images of brides and grooms, that's one of my favorite times actually to photograph with this lens is um, with the portraits part of the day. So bride and groom alone um, or just, you know, nice sunset shots of them. But um, this example is an example of a black and white image. Bride and groom are walking through a doorway. Uh, there is motion, you know, you can see her veil kind of flowing a little bit, but again, because this lens is so fast, I'm able to grab that beautiful look um, with that. And of course, you know, getting it in focus. Um, now, this next one here is of another Indian wedding, really beautiful bride and groom here. We're doing portraits inside a ballroom and uh, the lighting is very, very low. Now, the bride didn't want to go outside so we want, so she wanted to stay all inside. She loved the hotel, she loved the decor. Um, as a natural light photographer, that was a little bit of a struggle for me, to be honest with you. And so, um, you know, I made sure that we, you know, we stayed in an area that kind of gave me that, that, you know, ambient light that I wanted. There was a lot of red bouncing all over the place. So that was a little bit of a different situation here and, and challenging, but um, I love this lens in lower light scenarios because it's so fast and it dials down to 1.2, I can photograph, I mean, in a very dark scenario that I could never do with film. And, and I love that for that reason. So if you look at the bouquet on this, um, you know, the groom there is in the foreground. Um, he is, you know, he's very blurred out. You can barely tell there and I'm focusing at the bride as she's looking right into the lens. And she is tack sharp. Um, now the shutter speed here must have been around a 60th of a second at 1.2. Very, very beautiful scenario. And then, you know, of course, a prime 
beautiful scenario here of controlled lighting really at sunset is this uh, beautiful bride and groom walking with the bridge in the background um, towards the camera. Again, there's that movement. I love movement. Um, I think that it brings an image to life, even in brighter lighting scenarios. So here a bride and groom are walking towards the camera. I'm able to freeze them in a certain, um, you know, certain pose that I feel like just makes sense. It makes, it complements the couple and the background is you know, blurring out really beautifully. This was shot at 1.2 as well, and if you, it's hard to tell, but both bride and groom are, are pretty tack sharp. This next image of this beautiful couple um, in front of their uh, vintage truck here, this was shot pretty much right close to twilight, so the sun had been gone, so there was no, um, no backlighting, no front lighting, none of that. It really was just soft skylight. The bride and groom here have beautiful skin tone, which I think this lens um, adds to um, how, how great it is. It, just the combination of the Alpha 1 and the 51.2 uh, definitely gives me that really, really beautiful skin tone that I want. Now, there is a little motion here. Again, you know, the, uh, she is lifting her leg up. It's kind of coming up and down, up and down pretty quickly. Um, and I'm able to sort of so, still freeze it, but give me that beautiful, beautiful bouquet in the background. Now, the special part about this image is they own the building here. So I wanted to make sure that we got the building in the background. It wasn't as um, out of focus because I wanted to see the letters back there, Alpine in. So um, in this scenario, I'm shooting a little bit higher with my f-stop to be able to bring some of that in the back. Um, okay, this next image here of this other beautiful couple walking down towards me it, through the vineyard. This was right at sunset. Sun is pretty much behind those trees back there. And again, I'm shooting with uh, this 1.2 um, setting and the bride and groom are walking towards me. These are some of my favorite photos of brides and grooms walking towards me. I can do that with this lens because it focuses so quickly. Um, and of course, you know, if you have like, let's say trees, um, in front of a beautiful sky. It gives us that really beautiful bouquet look. Um, and especially when you're working with really warm light. Now, of course, you can work with this lens at any part of the day, uh, but as you know, with wedding photography, we are placed in so many lighting scenarios that sometimes, you know, we could be in a dark church, we can be in a super bright, bright, you know, golf course li lighting scenario where it's high noon um, and there's no trees around, but this lens is still so beautiful with it. Um, and then there's a lot of other lighting scenarios too. You know, we've got beautiful window light, maybe during a, a, pr a bride uh, solo shot or a groom solo shot, then there's a sunset, maybe then there is the, you know, the dancing and the cake cutting, which really is just maybe spotlighting. Um, I will bring in some video light and some flash, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I try to use as much as I can during those scenarios with, with the ambient lighting with this lens, and I'll give you examples as we move forward with some of these images. Um, Actually, that might be a good opportunity to do that now. The next set of images are just detail shots. Uh, you know, these detail shots are during, you know, maybe uh, a portion of before the bride and groom come and see the space or before the guests walk into the space. Um, making sure we can get these very clean, beautiful details for the couple and for the wedding planner and all the vendors so that they can show these images off. And I feel like, you know, this lens gives me that look that I want to be able to provide to those vendors or to provide to the bride and groom. Uh, this is how I see it. I think a wedding is a very soft um, scenario. It's very, it could be very feminine, in some cases could be masculine, but a lot of it has to do with, you know, how your settings in your camera. Uh, when I say feminine, I mean soft, which, which is great for with this lens because it gives me that beautiful bouquet. So um, this next image is a beautiful gold plated scenario here. The light is going down. It's kind of twilight. Um, I'm focusing right on sort of that front part of the of the top plate and uh, and then letting the background just blur out. I'm at 1.2 here. The floral designer is going to like this. Uh, she'll love it. The wedding planner will love this as well. Uh, it shows it off very well and it gives us a very beautiful, uh, you know, soft look in the background. Now, I mentioned earlier how when you get closer to a subject or when you get closer to a product or something you're photographing, um, the background and the bouquet gets a lot more 
soft. Um, and this scenario of, of this beautiful floral arrangement is an example of that. I think it's a very good example of it. So, you know, it wasn't a very big, um, big piece of, of art here, the floral piece, but as I got closer and at 1.2, the bouquet in the background became a lot more dramatic, which I really absolutely love. It almost looks like a painting. Now, the cool thing here too is the detail on these cameras is pretty amazing in the highlight. So you can tell at the very top, there's a, uh, the sky there. I'm still getting detail in the sky. It's pretty amazing. It's hard to tell in this image, but there's some twinkle lights in the background and the twinkle lights get really crazy big um, in the in the lens with the bouquet. The next one here is actually an example of me photographing at uh, 5.6 with this lens. And what I wanted to do here is I wanted to make sure that the, the floral pieces were also in focus along with the plate and um, the silverware and also the menu um, to be able to show everything off so that we didn't um, you know, just make it all about one particular spot in, in the frame. So, um, you know, still very beautiful look, whether you're shooting it at 1.2 or at 5.6 or at 8 or any, you know, any of those uh, f-stops. But this is an example of making sure that we get that um, everything in the foreground, uh, in the middle, and then, you know, of course, the focal point and then the background in focus. This one is a very simple photo of just a, a beautiful, uh, drink on a table and uh, I threw this in here because I just wanted you to see how how beautiful that bouquet is again and I can't say that enough with this lens I think that you know in, in the past I've owned all these lenses that wanted that I wanted to have um, give me this look also you know buying vintage lenses and all of these lenses that would provide me this look that I think a lot of people sort of saw back in the day you know when uh, I don't know when your grandparents um, <laughs> photographed you know uh, their your parents um, I would I feel like a lot of the older school images the bouquet is so beautiful and I think we were trying to replicate that in portrait photography at least in wedding photography um, you know as as we start playing with so many different lenses but this this is the this lens gave me this particular look so the 51.2 so if you look at this beautiful drink and you look at the background it is just blurred out I mean it just looks like pieces of paint in the background which I really like it gives us that very painterly look then I just threw this, you know, these beautiful, yummy <laughs> um, little burgers, little sliders in here uh, to give you an idea. You know, brought, this is literally, you know, server just almost walking through and, and I grab this very quickly. Um, you know, in a wedding scenario, you don't have time. You don't really, you know, you, oh, so hopefully you have time. But in most cases, I, I feel like I don't have time with my, my events. So um, if you look at the bouquet in the background, those sort of, you know, big yellow or warm, um, you know, circular areas back there is their candles, their candles on a table. So it's pretty amazing how they get so enlarged as you're shooting at 1.2, very beautiful. So I feel like this lens is so good for details. Um, now, if you notice all of these lighting scenarios have softer light, so you know there is no direct light on these particular um, images that I just showed, these last five detail shots, um, which is typical of the type of style that I like. But of course, again, you can photograph it in bright lighting scenarios as well. Um, now this next image is one of my favorites from this particular wedding. This was actually during a rehearsal dinner. And uh, I believe the, the sister of the bride here is making a speech. Um, and another scenario of when there's a lot of movement, there's a you know fast movement, people leaning forward, and I'm kneeling right um, right in front of their table here, and and setting this at 1.2 with this 50 lens, and you know literally I'm kind of moving it around and moving the, the focus around in different areas here. I you know she was laughing and I was able to get her with her hands here, um, which I think was really sort of emotional part of part of this image. So um, with her movement back and forth and the smiling at sunset, this is definitely still giving me that beautiful look that I want. I, I want it to be about them. So, you know, the, the background is all blurred out so that that doesn't become a distraction. If I would have shot this at 5.6, let's say at a higher ISO, I feel like it would have been a little bit more distracting with the background in focus. That's mostly why I like to shoot with the 1.2, just because it really gives it a sense of what I'm, 
what I want the focus to be on and what I want the attention to be on and then the rest just softens again I'll, and I'll say this again it's really good too for distractions in the background so this is a, a good way to highlight um, a particular you know that's why it's good with details a particular part of the scene because it um, it will highlight those things that are in focus and the background blurs out and softens it um, and you know as you start to um, and this was for me as I started to photograph pretty much everything at wide open uh, you know in my career whether it was a 2.0 or a 1.4 a 1.2 or a 1.0 lens um, I've always wanted to kind of photograph that way to be able to give me that particular um, style, I guess, if you will, so it was all consistent. And I think that's something that, um, as wedding photographers, we really strive on making sure that everything we photograph is going to be consistent throughout, whether we're shooting in low light, um, you know, in uh, darker scenarios, in a church, in a bright scenario. Um, so shooting wide open throughout for me was a way to establish a specific look and a specific style. Um, so, okay, now let's see. The last set of images here, I think are really good examples of using the camera in low light scenarios where maybe, you know, the wedding planner or the lighting designer has specifically set this up for the experience of the guests. And I think that, you know, it's important to, as a wedding photographer, not distract or make distractions, um, you know, during those lighting scenarios. Um, of course, I will use a, a video light, I will use a flash, but it is a very sensitive scenario, like during the speeches, for example, or when the sun goes down, or if you're in a ballroom when it's dark, uh, because of course now all of the attention is on the dance floor, um, or if someone's making a speech, for example. So I think that this lens allows me to not have to use so much video light and so much flash so that it really becomes an experience for the guests to not see my lighting, uh, you know, popping in front of literally the bride and groom. I mean, I've had scenarios where brides and grooms are like, oh my gosh, that's so bright, um, you know, and this lens allows me to dial down so low to be able to not use lighting that is, is so bright. Um, as a wedding photographer, and if you are a wedding photographer, you know that sometimes there's certain scenarios where it's so dark that my lens can't even focus. It's like back and forth, like, you know, trying to focus. Uh, 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 uh. We've all heard that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this lens does not do that. I mean, it is very rare when it has done anything like that. It's very fast, it knows where to focus. I can set the focus, so I can set face focusing, you know, we, we can talk about that later. Um, but this is so great for those scenarios. So again, it's about, you know, helping uh, as a vendor and as a part of a team, helping make sure that there's an experience for all of the guests and all of these, you know, uh, vendors as well. And that experience means don't put all the attention onto you as the photographer by, by putting in or, or adding so much lighting. So using a lens like this will help you. Um, the next set of images, uh, and sorry, I'm looking this way because I've got the images here, um, are is a black and white image of a bride and groom with, during their first dance. Now, during this portion of the day or this part of the of the evening for this particular couple, there is a little bit of video light, but there's a lot of ambient here, so my actual eye can see the bride and groom. And again, some so in some cases, it's so dang low the lighting. Um, so here, you know, I'm shooting at 1.2. There may be a little bit of movement, but the groom's face is in focus. Um, the dress might be a little soft in the in the foreground, but I tend to really like that. It gives it more of a cinematic kind of feel to it. Um, now I'm using my presets. These are my personal presets, so this um, helps to add that beautiful grain so that it's consistent with my film work that I'm gonna be doing for this couple. This image here is an example of a color image, this next photo, and this, uh, this is the same scenario. So we've got a tiny bit of video light on this. We're not moving a ton um, as the guests are all behind me. The band, of course, is behind them. Um, and I am getting a little bit of movement here. I add a little bit of grain with my presets and I have this really beautiful image that I most likely couldn't get with film. Um, you know, most of the, most of the film um, 
most of the film that we use at night or during the um, dancing is going to be 3200 speed film, so it's going to be black and white. So color film is not available in higher speeds for us wedding photographers, unfortunately. Um, so of course we're resorting to these beautiful cameras and beautiful lenses that Sony um, provided and has provided for this industry, which is awesome. Um, and then of course, you know, this next image, which could be one of the last images that I show today is, um, you know, just to kind of give you an idea, of course, people are cheersing here in this image. There's movement, you know, wine is going in and out of the frame. Um, but I love the bouquet here. It's 1.2. I'm able to, to not use any video light here. This is all the ambient. And because this lens again, dials down to 1.2, it's going to allow me to, um, to have a shutter speed that is, um, pretty high. So you know, maybe at about a 1 25th of a second uh, for this. So there will be a tiny bit of movement. I'm okay with that. Again, it gives me that cinematic look. Not everything has to be tack sharp. Not everything has to not have movement or any flow in the, in the images. If anything, I want that. Again, it's more of a, it gives me more of a cinematic type look. And I'm talking about doing that at the end of the day or when the lighting is a little more challenging or when it's darker um, to be able to give us that cinematic look and then of course you top it off with you know your uh, your presets or or any other um, adjustments that you're making in whatever program you're using um, all right so that is a very i think good example of um, when i use this beautiful lens i'm so so grateful uh, for for using this lens it's so beautiful it's definitely changed my workflow uh, and it's one of my favorite lenses it's you know some people say it's 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 these lenses that dial down so low that are fixed lenses like the 85 or the or the 50 they say they're so heavy but you know this one is not i feel like you know i even have a um, a camera grip or a, a power booster on the bottom of my of my a1 and it, i don't feel like it is very heavy i think it's perfect for me i'm, I'm used to holding very you know, heavy uh, film cameras and this one, uh, the combination between the A1, the booster and the lens is such a, such a beautiful combination. It just feels in my hands. It feels, it feels professional. It feels real. It feels, it doesn't feel dainty. Um, and I want to make sure that, you know, it looks also presentable and this combination looks really, really good. So anyways, well, thank you guys so much. I hope that I was able to help a little bit um, on at least when I use this lens. Now, of course, this was just, you know, during the portraits part of the day, or, you know, I mentioned um, photographing children or babies, then engagement sessions, and then using it at a wedding day. The majority of the work that I'm doing right now is a wedding, so I'm trying to use this, or I'm not trying, but I am using this lens um, in so many parts of the day. I mean, I can almost say that at least I'm photographing it with 60 or 70% of the day. So um, it's a very, uh, fast lens. It's a very versatile lens. Um, it is also a, um, a very beautiful uh, tack sharp lens. So if you're looking for that particular look, this is lens. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much. See you next time. Suddenly, here we are into the second half of 2021, and it has been a trip, and a lot's happened. One of those things is that Jose Villa has joined as the newest Sony artisan, and we could not be more excited about that. So after that awesome class, we were fortunate enough to have him here with us to take questions from you, the audience, and have a chat. So please, for those of you watching, do post your questions for Jose here, and we will try to get through as many of them as possible. And with that, let's welcome Jose in. How are you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> you know, cloudy Sunday here in Miami, but uh, yeah, re really excited to be here and for this event to kick off. Well, sorry if I look really tired. I shot a 14-hour wedding last night. <laughs> always uh, working. Always working and got home around 2 o'clock in the morning, but here I am. <laughs> Thanks, man, for taking the time, you know, cutting your sleep short and all that. No so, problem. No problem. We are no doubt going to have a ton of questions for you, but I think we'll probably, I mean, there's a lot of people are going to want to ask you, a lot of, that you could ask all the time. Not really sure where we should start, but overall, I think we can start with your transition to Sony. 
you have been known for the longest time to shoot film, particularly medium format film. And now you do a lot of work with your Sony, your, between your A7R4, your A1, and of course with your new 50GM. How has that transition been for you, moving from a, a different size format into something that's full frame, but still managing to get the images that you want? Yeah, you know, um, I've maybe talked about this before, but just to kind of tap in a little bit on it, I've um, I tested out so many different cameras as I was sort of trying to you know transition into at least having kind of that that beautiful flow. Um, and you know, Sony just has that that gorgeous film, uh, and even with my with my presets, of course, that beautiful film sort of look to it. Um, you know, the, the color, everything just seems to sort of work really well. Um, this, I'm really looking into skin tone. That's really, really big for me. And, I'm, and you know, and I am still shooting film as well. So when I, I get the images back from the lab um, and we're, you know, color correcting these images from the Sony files, they seem to be really consistent with my preset, which is why, of course, I, I tend to love the Sony files a lot more. Um, and it just sort of naturally just became my, my go-to digital camera. Um, you know, of course, I love medium format. Um, one thing that I do love about the Sony is, of course, the lenses. And, uh, you know, I have uh, a, a few Carl Zeiss lenses that really kind of give me that beautiful, you know, um, tack, gorgeous look, like we talked about in my little class. Um, and then the bouquet goes really beautiful in the background. So it just, it, for, it just was a really easy transition. I mean, it's such an easy camera to use for me. It's extremely fast. Um, you know, it's, it's great for all of those crazy moving, you know, dancing shots and bride and groom walking down the aisle shots and like all of those very, you know, I shoot a lot of Jewish weddings. And so, uh, you know, the Jewish weddings have so much fun and there's just so much dancing from a, so much movement. So the lenses are incredibly, incredibly quick and it just, it just made sense. I think naturally. Yeah. Your images tend to have a lot of movement in them. You are very much in the moment with everyone that. Um, that's part of the wedding party and the guests and so on. So I guess the size is helpful as well, right? And the fact that you don't have to worry about your autofocus, that it is so accurate and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, um, I'll remind those that maybe know or don't know too much about the uh, medium format cameras, they're, they tend to be slower. Um, you know, so with using the Sony, it's definitely such a crazy transition from manually focusing pretty much everything uh, to now having Sony uh, you know, these lenses just um, are incredibly quick. And so if anything, I mean, I, I, I hate to kind of put it this way, but it's almost easier. <laughs> um, sure. It's almost easier for me. Um, so it's, it's actually made it so that I can shoot um, a lot more, um, which I'm okay with, and a lot uh, faster, um, especially because, you know, everything is so quick. Right. Well, we have questions rolling in, Jose, so I'm going to get to some of those, and then we'll, we'll sort of continue in this train, though. And um, Rob asks, if you're shooting film and digital for an event, for a wedding, do you digitize the film capture so the processing looks consistent? And actually, that's sort of a, a, a great lead into a, a sort of second half of that, which is when you are shooting these specific films, are you able, from the Sony files, to match that look consistently? Because you do want to have that consistency across the board in your deliverables, correct? Yeah, that's a really, really good question, and that's extremely important what I, in what I do because, of course, we're delivering a full-on uh, gallery at the end of you know the wedding, not necessarily that night or anything, but you know six weeks or so after. And when I when you look at the gallery online, you want to make sure that at least for me, you know, you've got the film shots and the digital shots that look pretty seamless, where most people don't even know the difference. Um, so luckily, we've um, I've been able to work with with a developer and someone that can, you know that helped us create a preset and so i've got a preset that we apply to these digital files from the sony um and they're extremely extremely easy to use um you know and i just felt like these sony files they just pick up so well with the presets where it makes it pretty consistent um you know there's different types of films that we that we use there's like a, there's the fuji 400h or the kodak uh, 400 or kodak 800 um, and so I've created these presets that basically mimic that look. Um, and I will say with a little bit of tweaking, nothing too, too crazy, but definitely with a little bit of tweaking, um, you know, you can get it pretty consistently uh, throughout the board. Yeah, matching film is always something that's, uh, that's a challenge. But I think the flexibility of the new Sony files for sure, um, you know, adds a lot of leverage there. 
which is which is really awesome. I think if any of you are watching have seen Jose's work that he posted stories or or so far, it, it's pretty difficult. I, I challenge you all to actually pick out which ones are are film and, and which ones are digital because uh, his presets also are, are pretty awesome. Um, and again, everybody, if you're watching, please do post your questions in and um, and we'll get uh, we'll try to get to as many as that we can. Um, Matt, sorry, Martin asked, how many photos do you tend to hand over from a typical wedding shoot, Jose? Ooh, gosh. Um, you know, it varies. You know, like I said, last night I shot a really long wedding. So, you know, let's say on a typical 12 hour day, um, I could be delivering somewhere between 1500 or so to 1800 images. That's a combination of film and digital. Um, you know, with digital, I've shot three day events where I've actually photographed maybe 5,000 Sony digital images. Um, but, you know, of course, I'm going to call through those. I'm going to um, give, you know, the final images are definitely going to be, uh, I'm kind of a really big, uh, crazy editor. So, um, you know, I'm very strict with what images are um, presented to the client. But my number for like a 12 hour day is about 1800 photos. I feel like more than that, it, it's just really overwhelming. I mean, it's, and also too, like these files are so big, um, which is a beautiful thing, but also I'm starting, I need to, I'm still needing to kind of get used to the size of these files, if I'm being honest, um, which I love, right? Because, you know, now my clients can say, hey, I want this image for a, a big, you know, wall print and I don't have to get the, the negative scanned like I used to <laughs> um, with when I was shooting film, you know. So one thing really quickly, I think, before we sort of move on to the next question um, is, um, you know, what I love so much how the dynamic range on this camera and I'm shooting the, the A1, um, but I also was shooting the, the R7 IV as well. Um, a little bit here and there before the A1. So the dynamic range on that is pretty incredible. Now you got to remember that, you know, we're photographing usually a bride wearing a white dress and, uh, and a groom wearing a black suit in most cases or a deep blue suit. That seems to be kind of like the, the popular sort of colors and tones for these classic weddings. And so, um, you know, when you're outside and, and uh, you know, put in so many different lighting scenarios as a wedding photographer, you know, I can count six, seven different lighting scenarios that I photographed in yesterday. Um, the dynamic range on both the white and the black are pretty incredible. Like I can photograph outside in high noon, you know, at, if I'm shooting at a 1.2, which I, I will do <laughs> in bright light and the camera's like, wait, wait, it's so bright. It's so bright. It will still pick up the beautiful detail in the dress. And we got to remember these dresses, you know, there, a lot of them are custom. These people spend so much time and effort uh, and, and money, you know, figuring out what, or, or, or having a certain style, you know, there's lace involved in with these, within these beautiful dresses. And we want to make sure that we keep that, that, that detail. And these cameras, this, this, the, the dynamic range on this camera is insane. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, and what I do is I, I then create or, or uh, attach my preset to it. And it even helps even a lot more to bring in that detail of the beautiful dress. I think, I'm sorry, I think I lost you here. Having some technical oh, issues. There we go, sorry. There we um, go. I'll be back. No, and I was saying the details really are are critical, right? Because you are often working with various vendors and so forth. You're trying to highlight all the intricate work of, of all the table settings and flower arrangements and everything in just the best light possible. And speaking of light, the new 512 is kind of a light monster. That thing just drinks light like it's taking a shot at tequila. How's that been for you? 1.2. <laughs> You know, I am so attached to that lens. It's pretty crazy. I mean, I have it on pretty much all day long. Uh, it, it's just such a beautiful lens. Um, I mean, I really can't say, you know, it's just incredible, honestly. Like, I hate to sound like a sales pitch or anything, but honestly, like for me, like as I've been shooting contacts, uh, Carl Zeiss 80 lens for, you know, almost 20 years, this lens is right in, on par with that. Um, you know, and, and, and as I kind of think about what and how I photographed yesterday throughout the day, um, you know, I had to photograph some of the details in really bright light because, you know, we had no other option other than to hold back the cocktail hour, which we didn't want to do. And so um, the 50 really allowed me to, in really bright light, soften 
the look of the image because of how shallow I can go. Um, you know, and so uh, I, I tend to love really soft, you know, images. Um, of course, I high co contrast images are fine too. They're beautiful. I like them too. But even in contrasty situations, this lens just really softens everything up, which gives it a very sort of feminine kind of look for, for what I kind of am going for, um, which, which I love. And of course, brides are loving as well. So, um, you know, really this, this 50 really helped me out a lot. Now, the other situation really quickly is I was also in a getting ready room last night or yesterday for the bride and it was dark. It was so dark and my other lenses couldn't dial down. Uh, as as you know, low as this one, and I was able to really pull it off uh, with the 50, and still have you know shutter speeds up to 250 or 125. I mean, it was it was beautiful. I look back at the images and I'm like, wow, how that how the heck did that happen? <laughs> I surpri I'm surprised a lot of the times. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and for those of you watching, when the 50 was coming out, and I was super excited with the Jose as we've been talking about moving him over to Sony and, and sort of getting him up to speed and all that Sony's doing, I was super so to get that in, in his hands because it relatively, as far as focal length and field of view, matches that sort of famous, well-known Zeiss 80, um, you know, that Jose would use a lot on, on the contact. So mm -hmm. if you get a chance to try it, try it definitely give it a shot, um, you know, if you're looking for that sort of, as I said, a very sort of femoral, sort of feminine and sort of ethereal kind of look because it can do that extremely well. Um, we have a few more questions coming in here. Um, well, this is certainly pertinent to the conversation. Um, Rob again has asked, do you make your presets available for sale for others to use or are they your uh, proprietary presets? Well, it kind of started off with just in-studio presets and just using them here. Uh, but because we've had so many requests and people are asking, you know, how do I get a particular look or skin tone? Um, we are, uh, they are on sale. They're, they're for sale on develop.com. So if anybody's interested, I'm sure we can, you can find it on my Instagram, but um, they are, they are definitely on, on sale. And I have different packs, different films, you know, black and white, high speed, um, minimal grain, more grain, that whole thing. And when you're shooting these days, Jose, now that you are, you really are splitting between film and digital. How how much are you shooting of each? That's a really good question. You know, it's really interesting because I'm finding myself because it's so fun to shoot the Sony. <laughs> I'm finding I'm shooting a lot more digital uh, than I than I originally thought I would. And and I'll tell you, you know, we live obviously in a digital world where these wedding planners and these young brides want images now um, and they want to put them on their social media they're excited about their wedding it's also a marketing thing for these vendors you know to be able to show their most current work you know so it's oh my gosh it, it has sort of become an extra job to be honest with you to deliver these images or these previews uh the next morning which is totally okay um, I think sometimes we have to kind of keep up with the times. And, and look, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and, and I've seen so many of these sort of things kind of transition from when we didn't have social media to, to now and, and keeping up with the younger brides. I mean, my, my brides now are in, you know, right around 28 to 31, like 32 years old. Uh, I started a lot younger in my industry uh, with, you know, so now I'm older than these brides and I'm trying to keep up. So... Uh, to answer your question, I mean, I think that right now um, I'm probably about 50-50. Uh, but originally I thought, you know what, I'm probably going to want to use this digital for previews. Um, and also, too, I, I, right. get, I get published so much and um, we do a lot of celebrity weddings and, you know, high profile events where people, um, you know, are selling my images to the press. And so um, they want the images literally hours after they've been shot. And the, the beauty of, of you know, using Sony in this particular case is that it's so easy to be able to sort of, you know, even Wi-Fi those images to my phone. I've got, I can give a planner an image literally in five minutes. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, the, the turnaround time that's demanded these days of winning photographers or perhaps photographers in general definitely lend well to, to digital formats. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's always gonna be a place for film. I don't see that going away anytime soon. Um, but yeah, but the digital is is catching up to, to what it can do. And then the flexibility, of course, with things like presets and so forth and, and matching is, is definitely significant. Um, 
here's an interesting question for me from Grant. And this is one I think I should have asked you before because I'm a bit curious as well. Have you considered using an adapter to put contact lenses on the Sony? Because Sony's do extremely well um, adapting lenses from various other brands, not that I'm necessarily promoting that, but they do. You know, people have vintage lenses that they're very attached to, and, and Sony does a very good job of that. I'm not sure what the need is with the number of Sony lenses out there right now, and um, but but please take it away. Yeah, you know, I, I've toyed with that idea a lot. And I think when I first started um, using the Sony, I, I was picking your brain, Kish. I recall just sort of asking you yeah. about that. That was really important to me. Um, I recall even just, uh, you know, you sending me one of those little ring. I don't even know what you call them. What is that? <laughs> the ring. The yeah, it's just the, so one of the adapters, yeah. <laughs> the adapters, yeah. You know, and so um, I, re you know, I, I have it and I've tested it. And the thing with... I love, as we know, I love the Carl Zeiss lens. That 80 is, is incredible. The only thing with that for me is that it's just still a little slow. And I think I'm spoiled right. with the fact that the 51.2 is so dang fast. You know, so, and, and when you compare the images, you know, I have, and I'm going to be honest, I haven't like taken the time to really take, you know, these images side by side. Um, but even just looking at the files and 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 putting them into my phone from one the Ze the Zeiss eighty and then the fifty, sure. Um, I don't know. I, I don't see any reason why um, I would be using the Carl Zeiss lenses um, from my contacts versus just using the fifty one point two now. Mm. You know that that's it's right. kind of crazy for me to say that. Um, I think just based on the fact that so many people know me as a film photographer and a contacts, you know, uh, Zeiss lens lover. But the reality is, is this this 50 is is pretty incredible. And are you using the 50 to do sort of a myriad of different things? Are you using it for portraits and um, uh, like more classic portraits and environmental portraits and everything else? Is it very flexible for you or do you have a very specific set of, of types of images that you want to shooting with it? You know, I use it throughout. I mean, I, I love it for, for portraits. I love it for, you know, bride getting ready shots. I love it for bride and groom walking down the aisle. Um, I love it for first dance, you know, things like mm -hmm. that. So, but I am also, one of my other favorite lenses is the 35 1.4, um, you know, and that's, that's beautiful. A beautiful lens. Yeah. So, so honestly, like those are the two lenses. Like I, it, if there were no other lenses in the world, though, I would be super happy with those two, and that's it. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you know how Jose is an absolutely classic photographer. Those are the go-to lenses for uh, for most people. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. You know, I don't, I don't think, at least for what I do and the look that I'm going for, I don't need more. You know, I think that it. I don't like. I hate to say this. I don't really love tons of equipment. You know, I just feel like it really confuses me um, because I'm so focused literally on what is happening. I don't want to be fumbling with different lenses and I know the look that I want, um, you know. So, you know, yes, I have other lenses that I own, but I rarely take them out. I have the 90 uh, macro lens as well, which is beautiful and it's great for, you know, what I use it for, which is like ring shots and things like that. Literally, it could be a dozen photos and I'm done with it. Um, I also have that 24, uh, 1.4 lens, I think it is. Um, and that's really good in really tight spaces, obviously, you know, with dancing, that's really, really good as well with flash photography. Um, but, but uh, other than that, I'm done with that, you know, cause I do want my images to look a little bit more classic, um, and timeless. And I feel like sometimes with wide angle, the images, um, you know, just tend to just sort of, in some cases, kind of float the people float a little bit for me um at least when people are dancing you know so it depends but i think the 35 and the eight, the the 50 is is my go-to's and those are relatively small and light lenses i mean the 50s on the larger side being one you know one two it's got to have a, a lot of elements in it and so on but you know i'm assuming especially coming from medium format but having these small and light lenses you know means something when you are shooting these 14 hour weddings and you are really grinding for the better part uh, lion's share of a day. Is that something that you consider when you're choosing these things? And does that really make a difference to you? Yeah, no, it really does. I mean, after doing this for so long, you definitely start to feel it. You know, if you're, if you're working with equipment that's really heavy, 
Um, you know, I with my contacts, I don't even have a camera strap on it. I literally just hold it all day long. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I think the 35 millimeter is definitely a, a little bit more lightweight than the 50. The 50 definitely has a little bit more weight to it. Um, I also have the battery grip on my cameras. Um, so that adds a little bit of weight as well. Uh, but you know, it's not terrible. It's just something that you should consider because if you're going to be photographing these really long days and your hands are like this all day long, you can get super exhausted. Um, especially if you're doing three, four day events, which seems to sort of be the popular thing right now with all these brides and grooms wanting to do multiple day events for their wedding weekends. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Three, four, three, four day events. It seems like a lot for a photographer to do back to back. Um, but speaking of trends, you know, I think there's a huge audience out there that looks to you to, to get an idea of, of what's doing well and perhaps what's coming next, which is interesting, particularly because your work has never been one, I would say, to um, not necessarily set new trends. Like it, it's your look, it's how you work, and you've been very consistent with it over the years, right? Obviously, there's some evolution there, but you haven't um, been taken by fads. You know, do you like where do you see wedding imagery going over the next year or two? Is it more a return to classics and, and sort of timeless looks like what you do? I mean, I, as far as I can tell, that seems to be making a, a rather significant comeback um, versus the perhaps um, overly technical and clinical look sometimes that we've seen over the past couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I think from what I from what I see with my clients. Um, so many of my clients are really into sort of that Vogue, you know, Vogue magazine type look. So it's a little bit more fashion forward. Um, you know, we, we talk about how years ago wedding photojournalism was such a thing, you know, and then it kind of transitioned slightly into a lot of photographers doing a little bit more of the editorial type wedding photography or directed type photography. Um, right now, what I'm seeing is my most of my brides at least and i'm seeing even in just in, in just in general in the industry how images now are okay if they're not fully in focus they're okay if there's a lot more blur it's okay if you know um the dress isn't so perfect you know so that i like because i and i've always been a perfectionist i've always liked things to be so buttoned up and you know and clean and all of that now it challenges me um, to, to think in a, in a slightly different way, uh, because I'm wanting to do this for my client, you know, because they want, they love my, my classic type images and the editorial type stuff and how I direct and all that. But they also want the images of the in-between, um, which really just means you can't put your camera down at any moment. Uh, you know, and literally it's, it's the in-between shots that people are loving. And if you look at as a good example, uh, Vogue, uh, or Harper's Bazaar, you know, there's a lot of black and white imagery as well. And a lot of, you know, images that kind of mimic the look of film, which has a lot of grain, um, you know, and cinematic type look images, like I said earlier, with the motion blur, you know, so um, I've always been a fan of of that. I've always been a fan of, you know, your images are, are never out of focus. They're just soft focus. Um, right. And, uh, and I've always sort of been okay with that. Like, I don't throw images away if I feel like, it has some sort of a soft uh, cinematic look to it, you know? So, you know, I think classic is always going to be a good thing in the wedding industry. I think classic is always going to stay and there's always going to be clients that are gonna love that classic look as also along with these wedding planners, you know, these wedding planners have a specific style that these brides are going to. Um, they're creating for the client a classic wedding and so, a classic wedding, you know, you need a classic style photographer, um, you know, so I feel like that's kind of my, that's sort of, I would say my style is that sort of very classic and timeless look. Um, but I also, again, have to kind of keep up with what's happening with all of these younger brides that want more of that fashion forward look. Now, you know, these dresses are, a lot of them are so custom, um, you know, and everything is, is a little bit more sort of, uh, buttoned up with the, with the wardrobe, you know, like their guests, some of these clients are asking their guests to come in a specific color or, uh, you know, it, it's, it's getting pretty, pretty involved. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun for us because it makes it, it makes it different for us. It, it's, um, 
it's exciting. Um, you know, we get to shoot, you know, different beautiful wardrobe and styles and things like that, you know? So, and it's funny, it's like, there's so, everybody wants to take a freaking selfie at these weddings. And so there's so many phones out all the time and it's so hard for me to, to, to make sure that there are no phones in certain photos. <laughs> actually in the images. Oh, I didn't think of that actually. Yeah. 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 I mean, honestly, it's like, Literally, every everybody's taking a photo of themselves and posting it on social media like that minute, um, where the brides and grooms now are having to tell their their guests, you know, stop taking pictures, enjoy the moment, um, you know, because of because of social media. Because Jose is here to do it, you're going to get your images. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so so it, those are challenges. You know, challenge. Actually, someone had an iPad yesterday at the ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> Got all of those. Yep, yep. And it's like, okay, how am I going to dodge that? They're in the front row. You know, it's just, it, it's hard, you know, but that's also the challenges and what's so beautiful about what we do is is having to, you know, figure out ways of, of making it work. And obviously certain lenses and equipment really help you with that. You mentioned, you know, shooting the in-between moments and how popular those moments are. And typically those are often more intimate moments, uh, if I'm not mistaken. This, the size of, of the Sonys or mirrorless, but specifically these Sonys are, are, are relatively, um, they're inconspicuous, right? You, you can move along and, and really not be in somebody's space with it too much. And of course, high resolution means you can crop in later if you need to. Yeah. Is, is that working to your advantage or is that something that doesn't really play a role. I mean, because I think there are a lot of people out there who are who are very interested in taking those kind of intimate pictures and mm -hmm. are also curious about how much you're actually interacting, you know, with your guests to get those kinds of images or really if you are a bit stealthy and, and using the size to your advantage in that way. Yeah, I mean, it definitely helps because I can, you know, get into into spaces. And I think the big thing really is is that the cameras are not loud at all. You know, they're very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. So you're not distracting an intimate moment by a, a clunky camera, like a Contax, for example, um, you know, uh, or even some 35 millimeters that we used to shoot. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the, the equipment really helps to be able to get, grab that. What I love too is how you're able to really just sort of look at the images on the screen. You don't necessarily have to like put it up on your, you know, to your face. Um, because now I'm able to just sort of look at the people and have my camera here, but still know exactly what I'm shooting. Um, you know, so sometimes when you put your camera up to your face, people freeze, you know, um, because they think you're obviously going to be directing or taking a picture of them or whatever, but instead you can do it discreetly by just having it down here on your waist. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I definitely think that the, you know, the Sony is such a good, um, good camera for for minimal distractions to be able to get those in between moments for sure awesome um there are going to be a ton of other questions that haven't been answered um, but unfortunately we are at time um so for those of you who are watching thank you for watching and there's a ton more going on for the rest of the day so definitely stick around check out some of the other stages and the other classes going on and of course a uh, really big thank you to jose for the class and then for joining the q a after I'm sure we're going to get to do this again relatively soon, but thanks again, um, you know, for taking the time with us, Ben. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.